Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be unboxing and sharing my first impressions review of some brand new fragrance launches. A couple of these I have smelled before, but this is going to be my final haul before I also share a best and worst fragrance launches of 2023 so far video. It is kind of late, it's about mid-September, but we still have the rest of the month and then October, November, December. I think we are gonna see a lot of fragrance launches closer to the end of the year. So I wanna press pause and give you my official recap. And then I'm going to share my entire fragrance collection because it's been a while before I do a much needed fragrance declutter and organization video. So I have a plan here. That's what you can expect from me moving forward, but I cannot wait to get into it. So let's get started. We got really lucky because this package just arrived maybe an hour ago and I was hoping that it would be here in time for me to film this video. This is the brand new fragrance launch from Creed. It's called Carmina. And I mentioned this in my last love it or leave it video because based on the notes this sounds like the perfect fall winter fragrance and I know we had windflowers, it wasn't that long ago, but I just have felt like I needed something new from Creed. They're one of my favorite luxury niche fragrance houses. I always look forward to their new launches and they did send this bottle to me complimentary. Carmina is described as a sensual celebration of feminine allure, captured through exquisite rose de may and luxurious cashmere wood smoldering over a seductive base of amber and musk. It's a floral, woody, amber fragrance that's bold and sensuous. Top notes include black cherry, Berry, saffron, and pink pepper. Middle notes are rose de may, violet, cashmere wood, and peony. Base notes are frankincense, myrrh, amber, and musk. The bottle is definitely giving date night vibes, very sexy, sensual. I love the gold accents, but this deep magenta, kind of berry, pinky purple color is really beautiful. So let's see what we think. Oof. Powerful mist. Oh, okay, it's a, it, there's a lot going on. Very bold, I definitely get a hint of rose. I don't get a lot of cherry right away. This is bold, smoldering, a very intense fragrance. I like it, it's not really what I expected. I think I got hung up on the black cherry because it's one of those notes that really excites me in fragrance. But this is not a very cherry forward fragrance. I get a lot of cashmere wood. I get a lot of musk, amber, sultry and seductive, bold red lips, stiletto heels, femme fatale vibes. So in a way, it's not really my style, but I'm thinking cold weather because certainly right now in Miami, it's still 100 degrees outside. We're in summer mode for a while. I couldn't picture myself wearing this right away, but there's something very alluring about it because it's kind of complex. You can tell there's just so many things going on. This is one that I need to try on my skin. I'm really looking forward to trying the dry down because it's just so bold and intense and a little bit maybe heavy woody. Not so much sweet cherry, peony. There's not a lot of light florals in here. I think if you were a fan of Mise en Cire Amber Magique, you will probably really like this fragrance. If you remember my best and worst launch of 2022 video, you know that I did not like that fragrance very much. I tried to get into it, tried to wait until fall winter, but it was just too intense in my nose. This is reminding me a little bit of Amber Magique from Mise en Cire. But wait a minute, it's starting to lighten up a bit. I'm not gonna write it off just yet. I think this has to dry down on the skin and it could be really incredible. There's a nice sweetness slowly coming to the forefront and it is getting a little bit softer to the nose. I wouldn't say this is a safe blind buy based on the notes if you're somebody who read the notes and thought, well, I love frankincense, I love rose, I love black cherry. No, this is giving a lot of amber, a lot of intensity, a lot of musk, woodiness. It has dark feminine energy, very sexy. I need to try this on my skin. I think I really like it. I definitely like this a lot more than Amber Magique first impression, but I'd love to know how this dries down. Strong start, very strong start in that it's very strong. <laughs> this is a bold fragrance, not for the faint of heart. If you're sort of new getting into niche fragrances, try this on your skin, try a sample. 
we might as well stick with the bold fragrances. So next I have Tom Ford Myr Mystere. I heard nothing crickets about this fragrance, but then I saw it pop up on the Sephora website. So this was a blind buy, a purchase that I made myself from Sephora. And of course I went with the smallest size, the 30 ml, because this is a bit of a risky buy for me. Based on the notes, I was intrigued, but I have a sneaking suspicion this is going to lean more masculine and maybe be the type of private blend fragrance that my husband will like. I don't mind because as much as I don't want to wear these types of fragrances myself, I still appreciate them. I still think they're really beautiful and then I can just gift it to him. I was too curious, I had to try it for myself, even if I don't think this is going to fit with my personal preferences. It's described as warm and spicy with keynotes of myrrh essence, sandalwood, vanilla accord. This seductive expression of the mystical resin elevates one of perfumery's most iconic ingredients with a duo of powerful myrrh essences and an exquisite ultra vanille accord. I like the sound of the vanilla dry down, so this could be a fragrance that I like to layer with other things on top. I'm excited. Ooh, spicy. Oh, wow, I love it. But not for me, for my husband. Ooh, this is good. This is an incredible men's fragrance, in my opinion. Oh, wait a minute. All is not lost. No, I don't know. I, this I might keep for myself. At first I was thinking, okay, I can just put this in the box and give it to my husband as a birthday gift. But no, I think he's gonna have to borrow it from me because this is really nice. This makes me so happy. Tom Ford needed to redeem himself after the cherry launches earlier in the year, which were not terrible, just not my favorite. And when I think of Tom Ford Private Blend, I think of wow factor. There's just such a huge expectation on the brand. But I think I love this so much more than I expected. I'm getting excited because I purchased this kind of thinking, okay, I'm gonna give this to my husband. Myrrh, Mystere, spicy, woody, not my style of fragrance, but this smells really good. This is cozy, it's not too woody. And it's spicy, but it's not too spicy, especially as it's drying down. It's a cozy, woody vanilla. Sweater weather, yeah, it is a little spicy still. But I love the, the vanilla is like a cashmere vanilla, like warm, cozy sweater, cuddled up on the couch. I could see myself wearing this for a date night out. It's definitely more of a fall winter type of fragrance, but could just be date night. And I would definitely layer this with other things. I think it would layer really nicely with Cafe Rose or Vani Fatale, Fatale Vani. Anything with vanilla would be amazing with this. It has that really luxurious, elevated Tom Ford DNA. You know, there's a quality about the private blend fragrances that just feels kind of like, a really exclusive, if you know, you know, club. Cigar bar, speakeasy type of vibes. It's very sophisticated. But the vanilla gives it a really warm, inviting, universal, everybody could wear this type of quality. I think it's really beautiful. And if you love Tom Ford fragrances, I think you will love this. This is the one, I think this might layer really nicely with Tom Ford. I'm not sure, but I've heard incredible things about this fragrance. It's the new Burberry Goddess. I picked up the little travel spray because I was placing quite a big order and I just figured I would play it safe. I may end up with a full size bottle of this fragrance. I have had so many of you reach out and say, are you gonna try the new Burberry Goddess? It's incredible. I know this is a very vanilla forward fragrance. I cannot wait. I love vanilla. It's one of the best notes. It's in the same warm and spicy fragrance family. It's described as a warm and sweet gourmand with keynotes of vanilla infusion, vanilla caviar, and vanilla absolute. So very vanilla forward. I love the look of the full size bottle. It's all gold. It looks very pretty. I have a couple trips coming up, especially for the holidays. So I may be taking this with me. I think it's nice to have a travel spray. Okay, let's see. Will this be the vanilla fragrance of my dreams? There we go. Ooh, yeah, I get it. It's very pretty. It's very vanilla. Oh, I love it. This is a vanilla lover's vanilla. It is so nice. Yummy. 
This is full bottle worthy, definitely. I expected to really like this because it's vanilla and I heard so many great things, but wow. Now I understand the people who are raving about this fragrance because I did start to think, well, I know it's vanilla fragrance, but how great can it be? And I heard a couple other fragrance reviewers saying it's good, it smells really nice, but maybe nothing to write home about, but I would write home about this, I like it. What I love about it is that it smells very rich, elegant, and luxurious. It smells like a very decadent vanilla fragrance. A little bit more complex, I would say, maybe close to a Kaoli fragrance, like the sugared patchouli vanilla fragrance. But it doesn't have that generic designer fragrance feel. There's nothing that comes to mind right now that smells similar to this. This is a bit more feminine and sweet vanilla. This is really spicy vanilla, but I think this would be a killer combination together, especially for fall winter. I think this would give the Burberry Goddess that oomph, that kind of spicy, powerful base, and then this would be beautiful layered on top. This would give the Mermistere the pixie dust, that elegant touch that it needs. And I love them individually. You certainly don't have to layer them, but I'm going to layer them. I'm excited to wear these together. Now, if this doesn't smell like the quintessential fall fragrance in a bottle, I will be so heartbroken. I did my best to find information about this. I don't think it's been released yet. This is the new fragrance from Ellis Brooklyn. It's called Apple Love. They sent this to me a while ago now. I've had it for a couple weeks, I think. There is information available on Fragrantica, so I don't think I'm spilling the beans or spilling the tea too early. Of course, I will update you as soon as this is available, but we have to talk about it because these notes sound amazing. It has red apple, peach, green mandarin, lily of the valley, plum blossom, sugar cane, and osmanthus. Base notes are Madagascar vanilla, sandalwood, musk, and ambroxan. I love this deep lipstick red. This is so beautiful. This tells me it's gonna be perfect for fall winter. I just think of an apple orchard or a farmer's market. And I like that there's a good mix of edible notes in there. So let's try apple love. Oh my goodness. That apple peach combination so pretty. It's very fruity. It's a fruity floral fragrance. Apple is an unexpected note. I know it's not the most unique note out there, but there aren't a lot of fragrances that really showcase apple. There's the Kaoli Eden Juicy Apple fragrance, which is really beautiful. Oh, this is really nice. I would put them in the same category. A really nice fresh apple, like a country apple from Bath & Body Works. You remember that fragrance? That used to be one of my favorites. It gives a little bit of a vibrant, juicy, zesty, body splash kind of feel. But I think that's just the notes. I mean, it smells like fresh fruit. The green mandarin as well, it's very vivacious, very juicy. And then as it's drying down, it has a very fresh and clean, kind of straight out of the shower, herbal essences, shampoo type of smell. And I mean that in the very best way. Cassiopeia is sort of similar, and that's one of my favorite tropical fragrances. You know what I love so much about it? Because I've never really been wowed by Ellis Brooklyn. I find them to be more simple, more minimal fragrances, but this is very unique. It has that wow factor because it doesn't smell like anything else at Sephora when it gets to Sephora. Oh yeah, as it dries down and you get that vanilla in there, it's really nice. This would be the perfect everyday kind of casual grab and go fall fragrance. Here's another one of the new travel sprays I purchased from Sephora. Another one of my all-time favorite fragrance notes is Almond, which can be kind of tricky, sort of hard to find. So of course, I had to try the new Floral Street. This is Sweet Almond Blossom, and it's another collaboration they did with the Van Gogh Museum. I think this is the second fragrance I've tried with that collaboration. So it has beautiful artwork on the packaging. It's another fruity floral fragrance with keynotes of pink pomelo, apple blossom, and vanilla. Described as a blue sky natural high all year round, a daydreamer's fantasy. Mouthwatering natural pomelo and juicy passion fruit float over clouds of delicate apple blossom. Creamy vanilla, sandalwood, and earthy tonka bean are beautifully balanced with explosions of otherworldly crisp green matcha tea. I don't remember if these are twists. Okay, good, it's a spray. I was hoping it wasn't a roller ball. Those are always sort of tricky to try as a first impression. 
I've heard a couple reviews of this fragrance. People seem to like it, but that's about it. I haven't heard anybody really screaming from the mountaintops. So let's see, because the notes sound incredible. Ooh, it is very tart and juicy right away. I guess that's the pomelo. Not almond <laughs> at all. This is not what I expected, wow. I guess I should have read the description and not just the name. No, this is very juicy, fruity, tart, energizing, a little zestiness. Okay, I'm curious about the dry down now because I had no idea there was green matcha. I really like it. It's not that it's a bad fragrance, but I can't help but be a little disappointed because the reason I picked this up is because I saw sweet almond. I should have done more research, but you know, it's a first impression. I didn't wanna read too much about it. Yeah, it's nice, it's pretty. It reminds me actually a bit of Cassiopeia from Tiziana Terenzi. Fruity, floral, a little bit of a tropical vibe. And very clean and fresh. Again, expensive shampoo. This is more of a, a luscious summer fragrance, I would say. I'm not getting any of those dry down notes just yet. It reminds me a lot of the other Floral Street fragrances. If you're familiar with the brand, I think Floral Street has sort of an identifying DNA as well. Everything just smells like a fresh bouquet, a fresh garden. If you are not ready for fall winter fragrances and you love a fruity floral, this is definitely worth checking out. I'm sitting on the fence about this. I'm just trying to curb my expectations because it's so different than what I hoped for. It's not that it's bad, I really like it. I'm not sure if I love it right now. I have three more new fragrances here to share with you. This is the new beauty launch from Love Shack Fancy. They launched three brand new fragrances. So of course I had to try them all. They are exclusive to the Love Shack Fancy boutiques and then they're available online at Sephora. And I couldn't help myself so I visited our local boutique in Coconut Grove the day before the launch so I could smell them all, see the bottles in person. And then I did choose my favorite to pick up in the full size, but I went ahead and I purchased all of the travel sizes. Forever in Love is a fruity floral fragrance with keynotes of green pear, gardenia, and cedarwood. It's described as a swoon-worthy fruity floral fragrance with green pear and gardenia, like the first flutter opening the heart and setting you on a new path. Every petal of the gardenia flower is in full bloom, brightened by green pear and Italian mandarin, surrounded by jasmine, rose petals, and cedarwood. Forever in Love comes in the pink bottle. All of the bottles are in vintage inspired vessels with a giant bow. And when you're finished with the fragrance, you can remove the bow and take the top off and it acts as a little vase that you can keep on your vanity, which I think is really nice. They're not refillable yet. I think that would have been a really smart option, but they still made it so you can use the bottle in some capacity when you're done, which is nice. The sales associate who was assisting me at the boutique said they thought that Forever in Love would be the most popular which is probably why they put it in a pink bottle. To me, it reminds me so much of Flower Bomb. I think if you love Flower Bomb, you'll probably really like this fragrance. Hold on, fragrance emergency. Wow, that is so weird. Okay, never mind. How interesting. Okay, I don't know if I'm just confused or what, because when I was in the boutique and I was smelling the travel sizes, I either mixed them up or there has been a mix up with either the fragrance testers or the fragrances I picked up. Okay, so I knew one of them reminded me of Flower Bomb and the boutique, I thought it was Forever in Love, but right now it's Moon Dance. I'm just gonna assume, so I don't complicate things, that I got it wrong. So Moon Dance reminds me of Flower Bomb. It's a sweet classic floral. So pretty, has mass appeal. It's just a sweet floral, like Flower Bomb. Beautiful, very elegant. Somebody asked me if I felt like these fragrances were more mature, and I would say no, I don't think they lean really mature. I don't think they're adolescent. They are right there on par with other designer fragrance houses. I would put these in the same fragrance category or the same caliber as Valentino, Giorgio Armani, 
Okay, so Moon Dance is a sweet floral that reminds me of Flower Bomb. So pretty. A classic floral, it's light, it's airy, it could be signature scent. I think all three of these could be signature scent worthy. Not necessarily a great fall winter fragrance if that's what you're shopping for at the moment, but still classic. Oh my goodness, that freaked me out. Okay, so I must have gotten confused. So Forever in Love, my little pink travel size, the pink bottle, this is the one that reminded me a little bit of Greenwich Village from Bond. And they don't even have similar notes, so I'm not sure why. They're not exactly the same, certainly not dupes, it's just sort of comparable. This definitely has a juicy, fruity floralness. I decided I could not wait to get my Sephora points and I pre-ordered my personal favorite of the bunch. All three of them are amazing. And they're all three full bottle worthy. I actually think for the price, they're pretty reasonable. I believe they're 125. You do get a smaller size. So the full size is 2.5 fluid ounces versus a typical 3.4, but they are a little bit less expensive. And unless you're really flying through your fragrance and going through full body bottles of fragrance, at least you might have a higher chance of using all of the juice. Bohem is described as a spirited floral that captures a peony in full bloom laced with black currant and soft white amber, a forever romantic, endlessly in pursuit of wanderlust. The love notes, not keynotes, are peony, black currant, and white amber, and this to me smells very whimsical, very light, airy, slightly fresh floral. It's the perfect daytime floral and for whatever reason, this is just the one that spoke to me the most. Here's what the full size bottle looks like in all its glory with the giant bow. I know some people are going to love it, some people are going to hate it, but it is very much on brand. I feel like a lot of people feel that way about Love Shack Fancy clothing. I'm a huge fan of Love Shack Fancy. I think the bottle is very cute. And again, when you're done, you just take off the bow and I believe you can just kind of twist this bottle open. I don't wanna open it just in case, but I'm pretty sure you can just remove the top and then put a little flower bud in there. And this by itself, I think looks very pretty. It does say Love Shack Fancy and then Bohem right there on the bottle. And they have a library of, I think, 2000 different prints that they've used. And each fragrance has its own print from the catalog. Bohem is actually the lightest of the three, I would say. I don't necessarily want my fragrance to be super powerful and heavy all the time, so that doesn't really bother me. It's so pretty. The peony, the black currant, it's the perfect combination. It's a little bit sweet and floral and in just a nice everyday fragrance. I could see myself grabbing this every single day. I would not save this for a special occasion. This is something that I would just sort of spritz all over and then get out the door but I love it. And I actually love that it's a little bit light and airy. It's not overpowering. It's not going to give you a headache. Overall, I will say I've just been incredibly impressed by the Love Shack Fancy Beauty launch. It could have gone either way. I wasn't sure. I love the brand. So I had high hopes, high expectations. I wanted it to be really good, but it could have been a flop. It could have been just a launch into beauty because beauty is huge business. It could have felt really uninspired, but I think they did an excellent job. You know, they paid attention to all of the little details like the print, the bottle, how you use the fragrances afterwards. They hired a master perfumer to create the fragrances and this is just the beginning. They're planning to expand upon and build upon their new beauty category and you can tell. I feel like this was a very well thought out launch and it seems like a tease for things to come. I can't wait to see what they do because these fragrances are all really nice in my opinion. Those are all of the new fragrances I have to share for today. So that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you liked hearing my thoughts. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I love hearing from you guys. So if you have any recommendations, any thoughts on these fragrances, drop me a comment. We'll keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.